Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from your normal recap. I'm actually going to be talking about one of Resident Evil's most famous mini games, and that is Resident Evil Mercenaries. Now, this mode started in Resident Evil 3, and that is actually my favorite version of the game, or favorite version of the mode, which most people would know it from Resident Evil 4, 5, 6, and Resident Evil Village, as well as its own version on the 3DS called Resident Evil Mercenaries 3D. But I wanted to talk about the version within Resident Evil 3 and just give my thoughts on it and what I still love about that version, what I loved about it back when it first came out. So with that being said, let's gear up and take a trip back to Raccoon City. When you start off the Mercenaries mode or Operation Mad Jackal as it is called in this game, you get to choose between the three characters that Jill encounters in the main game, which are Nikolai, Carlos, and Mikhail, the three mercenaries. Each character has their own set of perks and weapons that can make the game a breeze or a challenge to get through. I myself always choose Mikhail because of his weapon choices. He's got a rocket launcher, a shotgun, and a magnum, as well as ammo for each weapon except for the rocket launcher. Each of these guns helps with crowd control for zombies. The magnum obviously helps with hunters because they are one hit kills with the magnum and it's easier to use a magnum on them i always save it for when i fight those guys unless i have enough ammo to basically get through the game and killing zombies if i need to if i you know if the shotgun runs out of ammo and i'm not wanting to reload right on the spot i'll just equip the magnum and kill whatever's in front of me quicker also nikolai and carlos they're a little more difficult because of their weapon choices nikolai only has a knife and then carlos only has an assault rifle and a handgun now, if you're great at the dodging mechanic, those two characters can be a breeze. If you can just dodge out of everything's way, trying to get from point A to point B without getting killed. I am not the best at the dodging mechanic. I've had people ask me sometimes when they've seen me playing it, well, how'd you do the dodge? I don't know. It just, it happened. Stroke of luck, I guess. But I know if you're holding the aim button and an enemy's coming towards you, nine times out of 10, you'll just dodge out of the way. And it happens a lot when I don't want it to. So that's kind of why it can be also annoying at times if you're trying to shoot a hunter and then all of a sudden you dodge out of the way and you end up missing and wasting in a magnum round just trying to kill a hunter. Keep in mind that you'll see red barrels throughout the whole game. Take advantage of those red barrels. Shoot them. If there's a crowd of zombies around, there's actually one hallway where there's about six or seven zombies that crowd around a barrel. And if you can shoot that one barrel, you can get up to a minute of time just by killing all those zombies at once. There are some red barrels that will be a little harder to get because Nemesis is running around and Sometimes you'll shoot and he'll run right past it and you'll end up missing and not hitting him at all. So you got to be careful with some of them. Now, this version does play a lot like extreme battle mode in the form of it's got the same character select screen. It's got the same music and everything, but it also plays like Fort Survivor. And I believe it is a modified Fort Survivor mode where you're going from point A to point B before something explodes. Only this time you are the explosion if you run out of time. You have a bomb implanted in you. And should the timer run out, it's game over. Should you die, it's game over, obviously. But you'll have obstacles in the way of zombies, dogs, hunters, spiders, nemesis, brain suckers, drain demos, and birds. Each of these things are trying to kill you, and it can get incredibly tough, and I will talk more about those in just a second. Something that I always enjoyed about these older Resident Evil mini games, though, is the linear pathways that they have. Going from room to room, not really knowing what is behind each door and what is going to try and kill you. The newer ones, while they're fun, yes, you kind of can see where your enemies are. You really don't know where the bosses are sometimes because you can hear them in the distance and you don't know where they are. You can think they're in front of you, but they're actually behind you. So that part's still a little bit scary of not knowing where the boss characters are. But a lot of the enemies, you can see them from afar and you know where they are. And it's a little more open, so you can kind of go through the area. And I, sometimes I get a little intimidated when I start the new Mercenaries modes because I'm like, dang it, I, I had everything perfected in these other ones. Now I got to relearn everything, which is not always a bad thing. I mean, I like relearning the pathways and the best ways to take out enemies and the best ways to get those combos up and everything. But these older ones, especially this one, just not knowing was even scarier. You could go through a door and have anything from a pack of zombies to a group of hunters attack you or go through another door and have nemesis, not one nemesis, but two nemesis with rocket launchers trying to kill you. And I actually want to talk about that one for a second here. There is a hallway near the end of the game where you're trying to go to the bar where you met Brad because Carlos is in there with some item drops for you and you'll come across two nemesis. Now, my advice for this final part after you get through that Y hallway is if you have enough ammo conserved save it for this spot don't use it all on nemesis 
if you have two rockets use the rockets on both of those knock them down once run through the door and then exit the other way of the bar don't try and go back out where the nemesis was because you'll just end up going into a world of hurt with those guys keep in mind that the last few rooms there are hunters and a whole lot of zombies and my best advice for that is to save your magnum ammo for the hunters use all your magnum ammo on the hunters as you come out of the bar you'll see two but you can actually run past them and pretty much not get hit by them if you're quick enough i've been nicked a few times by them but it's nothing to you know destroy the game or anything as you come to the final few rooms there is one street near the beginning of the game at, when you play this jill and you'll see three hunters if you aim correctly or properly or right in the right spot you can actually hit all three of them one at a time so you'll shoot one two three and they'll all be knocked out and when you come into the final warehouse level which is where you actually started the game with jill you'll actually see just tons of zombies in front of you and what you really want to do is if you don't have enough ammo for the shotgun try and just kill what's in your path and then run past them and then if any stragglers show up you know go ahead and take them out too but i highly recommend using the enhanced shotgun ammo for this spot because you can kill a bunch of them from a distance and basically take out two or three at once and get that timer up even more i finished the game with almost six minutes one time and it's just insane the amount of stress it can put on you when you're first playing it so i don't want that to scare anybody off definitely try the mini game out definitely practice it with it a little bit because i had to practice with it a lot when i first played it and one time i actually lost my game save had to start completely over and do it all again it was not fun I hated it and I blame alone in the dark new jacks or sorry one eye jacks revenge for that I just wish that I had not lost my game save on that it will help in the end especially if you're playing on hard mode it will help get as much money as possible to unlock all the special weapons which I'll talk about that in a second too because the special weapons will help you with hard mode especially fighting nemesis with his item drops and yeah it kind of breaks the game a little bit but it does help fighting him a little bit better and getting those item drops to see exactly what he drops throughout the game because nemesis on hard mode is definitely tough i will not lie about that he's definitely a tough fight there so let's go ahead and talk about those survivors that i mentioned so your survivors in this game basically serve as a checkpoint timer for your characters and much like the newer games where you see those timers in the distance that you have to shoot and get the extra bonus time these guys will give you 20 extra seconds Plus, they will give you item drops from ammo to health. And depending on who you're playing as, depends on what they drop now. Because I always play as Mikhail, it's usually just shotgun shells and magnum rounds and first aid sprays and enhanced shotgun shells. Now, if you're playing as Carlos and Nikolai, I'm not sure what they get because I've never gotten that far with those characters to see what they get. But I will say that each survivor has a time limit in order to save them. And as long as your timer is above two minutes... Because I've always noticed this, every time it's been above two minutes for me, I've always been able to save one of the survivors, or all of them really. And the only reason I have never saved Marvin, at least not anymore, is because every time I save him, I always go to save Brad, and Brad is dead, and I can't save Brad after that. So just keep in mind that nine times out of ten, Brad will likely be dead when you go to save him if you choose to go Marvin first. I don't know if it's the other way around and if you save brad and then go to marvin you'll lose out on it or anything i've not tried it maybe i should but the characters that you save are basically all characters that died in the game except for carlos so you get to save carlos nikolai marvin brad dario and a random citizen that you hear screaming in the main game you find her in the newsroom she's the girl that screams out help me at one point but you actually can't help her i don't know if that was ever programmed to be able to help her i think she's always dies regardless but they all drop items that will help and nikolai and marvin both drop first aid sprays so that's why i choose to save nikolai instead of marvin because he's on the pathway from beginning to end he's on the designated path i don't have to go too far off to save him yeah it's still kind of far away because he's in the press room where you get the uh, oil and everything but i choose to save him but also keep in mind that there are three gamma hunters in there so he can be very hard to save if you're not careful with those hunters and each survivor that you save you have to eliminate every enemy that is in the room first before you can even save them so you have to fight those gamma hunters regardless this is one thing that i wish they had kept in the newer mercenaries modes i really like the fact that you got to save survivors and get the item drops from them but also 
I gotta remember that Resident Evil 3 was supposed to be a spin-off game, so everything in this game was gonna be completely different from the other games. It was the first one to include Mercenaries mode, yes, but it was also the last one that included in the way that they did it. Whereas the newer games, when they came out, it was just completely different. As you come to the end of the minigame, though, you find out that Chief Irons is actually the one responsible for the bond that was implanted inside of you. And he grants you your freedom, plus gives you your bonus. And you do get bonus weapons with the money that you get to buy them with. Now, the bonus weapons come in four forms. There is the assault rifle, Gatling gun, rocket launcher, and then just unlimited ammo for every weapon in the game. I recommend getting all of them. But I also recommend getting at least the unlimited ammo too because it does help with those nemesis fights. Especially if you're going to play on hard mode and you want to get those epilogues and you really don't want to have to stress over fighting nemesis throughout the game six times. You can just use that rocket launcher each time to destroy him. And it does help with some of the bosses such as the Gravedigger both in the sewer and the graveyard. It really helps fighting the Gravedigger. I can't stand that enemy. I have never liked that enemy ever since the first time I got to him in the sewers. It just annoyed the heck out of me because trying to get those stinking panels pressed in a quick time was so hard. But using the rocket launcher, no problem. But I will say that boss is a little bit harder on the harder modes. A lot, basically every enemy is difficult in the harder mode. So keep that in mind that it will be a little challenging still, even with unlimited ammo. And with that, I would like to get my final thoughts on this game itself. I'm not going to lie. Mercenaries Operation Mad Jackal is my favorite version by far. As much as I like the newer ones, I just can't stand how open they are and how intimidating they can be at times because when I found out that Mercenaries mode was coming back, I was excited. I did not like how they did it. I thought it was going to be one of those where you go from room to room like they did with this one, but they didn't. It was more open and I just enjoyed Operation Mad Jackal way more. Now, if you do enjoy the new Mercenaries modes, I'm not faulting anybody for that. They are still very much fun. It's just I did it once perfecting everything in Resident Evil 4 and then I told myself I would never do that again because it was so stressful and I just had such a hard time with it especially trying to keep those combos up and I just said you know what I can't I can't do this again I can't do it I, I'm good I will just play it for fun I will miss out on some unlockables but I will play this mode for fun that is just my thoughts on Operation Mad Jackal I highly recommend it. I, I think everybody should play this version. And if I mentioned it before, I'm going to mention it again. But each version of the game has the Mercenaries mode. With the PS1 version, you actually have to beat the game first in order to unlock it. But keep in mind that if you beat the game on easy mode, you cannot play Mercenaries mode to unlock stuff for hard mode. So you have to basically beat hard mode again, or for the first time, in order to get mercenaries mode and use your unlockables in that version where if you unlock them in easy you have to use them only in easy mode but i do recommend it for hard mode because you can't unlock the epilogues as i mentioned before the other versions like the dreamcast and the gamecube and the pc they're unlocked from the beginning so there's really not a problem there you can play the mercenaries mode before you even play the main game and basically unlock everything to use in the main game which i will do eventually when i get back to the dreamcast version i do plan on playing through that for a future playthrough on the channel but Currently, if you're following my Resident Evil Marathon, I am going to be playing through the PS1 PlayStation versions for everything. And then later on, I'll do like a separate Dreamcast version for the games that were on Dreamcast. But with that being said, I want to ask you guys, what is your favorite character? Who is your favorite character to play as in any Mercenaries game? Not just this one, but any Mercenaries game throughout the entire series. Let me know down in the comments below. I would like to thank you again for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I always enjoy making these videos because it gives me a chance to revisit the past and introduce these older games to a newer audience who might be interested in trying them out for themselves. But it also gives me a chance to bring back the memories to those older fans who used to play these games back in the 90s and early 2000s such as myself. But as always guys, be sure to hit that thumbs up and ring that bell to be notified of when videos go live, share with your friends and family, and I'll see you next time.